Don't get me wrong, Fedora Linux is a great project run by great people, but over the years, people have gotten this really weird idea in their head, or maybe they just didn't know the history of the project in the first place, whatever the case may be. A lot of people just don't realize that Fedora is this massive distro that makes these wild experimental changes. Changes that when they are made, people often think are really, really dumb. But oftentimes, they are proven right in the long run. It just usually takes a couple of years for that to be the case. Now, I've talked about many of these cases in the past, however, here is a singular video you can point to with some of the biggest examples of this. Let's go all the way back to 2007 with Fedora 8, the adoption of Pulse Audio. Not just adopting it as an option, switching to it by default. Now, Pulse Audio first started in 2004. At this point, it had a genuinely terrible reputation. And for good reason, because it was genuinely terrible. In hindsight, swapping to Pulse Audio has made managing audio on Linux just a vastly better experience. Yeah, some people still go and run Ulsa by itself, but most people have just accepted, yes, Pulse Audio actually was a fairly good idea. Even Pottering, the developer of the project, didn't think now was a good time to do it. When Fedora adopted it, which they were the first major distro to do so, Pottering said Pulse Audio is the software that currently breaks your audio. This was made much worse when other distros started adopting it. For example, Ubuntu with 8.04. He said Ubuntu didn't exactly do a stellar job, they didn't do their homework. If you go back and look at forum posts from that time period, people were constantly complaining that their audio just didn't work, it would crash, it would be staticky, it was not a good time to swap to Pulse Audio. But they were right. Speaking of being right, let's move up to 2010 with Fedora 15. Do you know what happened then? The switch to System D. Once again, they were the first major distro to adopt SystemD by default. I'm sure you've heard them, I'm sure you know exactly what I'm talking about. Even to this day, there are still some people that think SystemD is controversial. Anytime you talk about SystemD, someone is going to say, Oh, but System D is bad. And it was so controversial when it happened that there were distros that were formed that are just the distro minus system D. Their entire purpose of existing as a protest distro is not shipping system D. But in the long run, Fedora was right. A few years after this, Arch Linux also adopted it. Then a few years after that, Debian after a lot of argument, then Ubuntu, and over the years, everyone else adopted it. Nowadays, every single mainstream distro is a systemd distro. If you don't want to use a protest distro, basically your only option is, what, like Gentoo, pretty much? I guess you could use Void, but that's pretty much it. Let's jump ahead a few more years to 2016 with Fedora 25. Wayland, by default. This is specifically on the GNOME version, not Fedora KDE or anything else like that. That comes a few years later. Wayland, by default, in 2016. <laughs> Alright then, keep in mind, this is long before widespread use of portals. Pipewire didn't exist. Pipewire started in 2017. There wasn't functional screen capture. This was not a time to default to Wayland. Not even close. It was usable as a developer. You could browse the web. It was basically in the state that the experimental support on things like Cinnamon are in today. It was not the time to make it the default for all your users. You were still incredibly reliant upon X Wayland for just basic things that there are nowadays actual Wayland applications for. But, in the long run, 
that was the right choice. It just wasn't the right choice then. Now to 2021 with Fedora 33. Make ButterFS the default file system for desktop variants. I have been told to try ButterFS for a really, really long time. Having file system level snapshots is an incredible feature to have. But most distros, even today, even multiple years later, still just rely on the tried and true ext4. This is probably the least controversial change on this list, but it is something that most distros still don't do. I have a feeling though, in the long run, they probably are going to be right, and ButterFS is just going to be what people use. How about we stay in 2021 and talk about Fedora 34? Route all audio to Pipewire. This might not seem like a controversial change, but I think a lot of people forgot just how bad Pipewire was when it first started. Nowadays, absolutely rock solid. Back then, I did multiple videos talking about switching to Pipewire, switching away from Pipewire, switching back to Pipewire, switching away from Pipewire, and finally switching back to it because it just clicked. Throughout that period, there were a lot of bugs that completely broke my audio. My favorite one is, you know how you can change the level of like your audio in a music player or audio in your browser separate from your master audio? If you are capturing audio from something like OBS, the level you capture from the application is the level it's supposed to be captured at. Except that's not what was happening, it was actually being controlled by my master volume as well, so as I raised up my volume, the level in OBS was also higher as well. That is completely unusable for audio capture. But then, the problem just went away. And so did basically every other problem, and now in 2024, it's just a better way to do audio. Pipewire takes that baseline we have with Pulse Audio and all of that stuff that still relies on Ulsa, along with all of this magical jack stuff, and then let's just throw in some video capture stuff for good measure and just have it be this multimedia engine all managed by this one thing. You could say, oh, it's not following the Unix philosophy. <laughs> yeah, it's not, but it's a really good piece of software. And as for the Pipewire video stuff, that's only going to become more and more important. Very, very soon, in fact, because the OBS 30.1 beta has Pipewire camera source support. I can already capture my entire desktop over Pipewire. Now, I'm going to be able to capture my camera, my capture card, also over Pipewire. Let's stay on Fedora 34 and talk about Plasma. Wayland by default for KDE Plasma Desktop. Keep in mind, this was 2021. This, I feel, was a much better time to default to Wayland. However, you know, things were still kinda rough and things are still kinda rough now, but back in 2021, we were just barely seeing video capture be a thing. There were still a lot of issues that needed to be resolved. And back then, a lot of people would just switch away from using Wayland and go to the X11 side instead. I feel like if we did this maybe last year or you know, right now, as we go into Plasma 6, for example, that's probably going to be a less controversial time, but it's certainly not as bad as when GNOME was done. Whilst all the choices I've shown have been good in the long run, not every single one fits that camp. Let's go to Fedora 35, where there was absolutely no excuse to make this change. Filtered Flathub Applications. By default on Fedora, you had access to Flatpaks, but at this point, you didn't have access to Flathub. Out of the box, the only enabled repo was the Fedora Flatpak repo, which is basically just Flatpaks that were repackaged from RPMs. You could enable Flathub with the command to do so, or there was a toggle available in the application store to enable Flathub automatically. Except that's not what it did. Instead, what it did was enable this weird filtered down version of Flathub that only contained a handful of applications. Applications which they say will not cause legal or other problems for Fedora to point to, does not overlap with Fedora Flatpaks or software in Fedora that can easily be made into a Flatpak, and works reasonably well. Now the problem with this 
is having this toggle was blatantly lying to users and led to tons and tons of Reddit posts, tons and tons of bug reports from users who just thought the toggle didn't work because they clicked the toggle that enables FlatHub and it didn't enable FlatHub. So it was clearly broken. This was just a bad UX decision. And then there were people in the project actually defending it. In the long run though, they did go and fix it, and we have this, unfiltered FlatHub, so now when you click the button to enable FlatHub, it enables FlatHub. Imagine that. What a crazy choice that is. Now let's go to 2022 with Fedora 36. Once again, another Whalen change. This time, Whalen by default with NVIDIA proprietary driver, specifically in the GNOME side. I am not an NVIDIA user for good reason. System76 is desperately hoping that the beta 550 drivers actually make Wayland good. Switching to Wayland NVIDIA by default was not a good choice. Some users do have a good experience, but a lot of people still find it absolutely terrible. For the most part, it seems like the really newer cards have a much better experience than anything just a little bit older. But doing this then was not a good idea. Now, how many of you remember this fun situation? Fedora disabling Mesa's H.264, H.265, and VC1 encoding over legal concerns. Legal concerns that had never existed before because you couldn't disable H.264, H.265, and VC1. As soon as you had the toggle to disable it, suddenly, well, I guess this means it's time to break things. Why didn't we worry about this before? I don't know. Now, when this happened, there was a lot of concern over how this would ripple out to the rest of the Linux world. Would this end up affecting the FlatHub repo? Would OBS, for example, be completely unusable because now they want to break H.264 encoding? Luckily, a solution was put in place to make sure that didn't happen, but everybody was worried then. Now, with all of this context, that brings us to Fedora 40, KDE Plasma 6. That by itself, not that big of a deal. The big deal is dropping the X11 session. But knowing all of the other things they've done before, knowing that oftentimes they make a change, and then in the long run, it ends up being a good idea, but when they do it, it's a touch too early. I hope that explains why this change is happening now, and not, you know, three or four years from now, when everything is going to be dealt with. They're doing it now because that's what Fedora has always done. Fedora isn't Ubuntu. Yes, they're going hard down that snap route, but for the most part, Canonical is fairly conservative in the changes they make. Fedora, not so much. But let me know your thoughts down below. Do you run Fedora? What has the experience been like for you? Have you been using it for one year, five years, ten years? I'd like to know. And what do you think about some of the changes I brought up? Do you think they ultimately were a good idea? I'd love to know. So if you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe to the Verapay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and my lady.